So let's say you're driving for Grubhub, DoorDash, or Uber Eats, and question for you, when it comes to your earnings, would you rather have average earnings or stellar earnings? That's average earnings or exceptional earnings. Well, obviously, right? we want exceptional earnings. We want as much money as possible, but I guarantee you, regardless of the app that you drive for, you're going to have average earnings sometimes. Now, in this video, I want to take you through a recent shift, driving for some of those food delivery apps that's ultimately resulted in kind of average earnings. And I want to give you very important reasons, ultimately, again, why that is okay. Welcome to the channel, my name is Mike. On this channel, I help you with the gig economy, your side hustle, your full-time hustle, making money and creating multiple revenue streams. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So starting with a very important consideration here, bonus pay, when it comes to your earnings, bonus pay and incentives is one of the, if not the biggest thing, that's gonna help you earn $25 or more driving on these apps here. So going online with DoorDash, we have a very strong bonus. $3 extra on every single delivery completed. And we can see here, here's some recent peak pay on DoorDash. And I've actually been seeing a slight uptick on more bonus pay from DoorDash. We have $3, we have $4 peak pay. So let me know down below in the comments, have you seen an uptick? Have you seen an increase in peak pay? Let us know. Now, of course, we're following best practices here. We're multi-apping. That's driving on different apps at the same time, so you can select the best order for you. So online again with DoorDash, looking for orders here. Now, one thing to note, there's actually a batched bonus. So it's a grouped bonus. You complete a certain amount of deliveries in this case, and you get an extra bonus. So there's a 20 delivery challenge here. So complete 20 deliveries, and you'll see up top receive an extra $50. Now that's nice if you're gonna hit that volume anyway with the deliveries, but we actually got this order first. So $23.54 on Uber Eats. Now quickly, take a look at the time here. It is 6.09 p.m., so it is a little bit after we initially went online anyway, so keep that in mind for later. But this order, we'll use kind of the black screen hack here. We'll go out of Uber Eats, we'll go back into the driver app, and now we can see the entire route. Now for this one, because it is pulling us so far west outside of that central marketplace, I mean, it is paying close to $24 for about an hour, which isn't bad when you think about that as gross revenue per hour, but as always, think about your own marketplace and positioning. Where is this gonna leave me? Is it gonna leave me basically in a dead zone? And again, simply more apps, more options here. So Grubhub now, really shortly after, for Wendy's, a single order, $12.24. Same kind of thing here with positioning and the market knowledge, fast food restaurants could be a long way to the drive through especially this location, again, locally here in Pittsburgh, gets pretty slammed, declined. So remember the time and generally just going online around 6 p.m. here. Well, at 6.12 after declining those orders, we get this one. It's a stacked order this time on DoorDash. So you can see the counter on the right here. Let's go over what I would look at here, looking at an order request. So we're looking at the overall pay, it's $18, and that does include an expected tip from the customer. That's good to know. So it's a stacked order. It's two or more assignments for one driver, and we see both restaurant names. That can be helpful. And then for the positioning here, it's not too bad of an ending destination here. It's certainly pretty close by or a small commute away from other hot zones, let's accept. I feel like since market knowledge really does help in trying to make decisions of what orders to take here, this is also important to note as well. Check this out. So remember the two restaurant names here, pay attention to the second one. It's Bird on the Run here in Pittsburgh. Well, if we go to make the pickup, it's actually under Chow now. So keep that in mind, this actually works really vice versa on all of or most of these food delivery apps that you'll have a request under a different name than the physical restaurant location. And actually speaking of that first restaurant was actually the similar kind of thing here. It was a virtual restaurant and you can actually see that denoted here on the pickup screen. You can see a hot box by Wiz is a virtual kitchen located inside Permanis Brothers Pittsburgh. Let me know down below in the comments how often you've been seeing virtual kitchens. I feel like I've been seeing them more on DoorDash and Uber Eats, not so much on Grubhub, but now it's time to actually 
Look at Uber Eats, this one, $11.50 for 3.9 miles from the restaurant that I continually cannot pronounce. I don't know, but let's do the black screen hack. So we'll go out of the Uber Eats app, we'll go back into it and we get the very valuable information as far as the route and the distance, et cetera here. This one looks pretty good, except. And then remember when you're multi-apping, you're gonna be online with two or three different apps. So make sure to either end or pause your driving on those other apps because obviously you'll continue to get other requests here. So we can see here on a DoorDash, for example, you need to pause your dash. On Uber Eats, you would go offline. On Grubhub, you would click unavailable. Our next order, $28.93. And I'm curious, let me know if you've seen any 30 plus dollar stacked orders. I think that'd be pretty interesting, but let's decline this one, 82 minutes on the ETA there. That's not really ideal. And then we'll wrap it up with the classic here, Chipotle, this time on a DoorDash, $10 for 4.3 miles. So remember at the start of this video, I said that this shift was really average pay and it really was, we'll see the numbers here shortly, but it was average pay because honestly, it was pretty slow. If you go back and you look at the times here, we had orders that we needed to decline, then yeah, it really wasn't that busy, that saturated of a day of constant pings of order requests. And honestly, you'll have that. And the best things you can do is really just following the best practices that we talk about here on the channel. So definitely invite to subscribe and join the team if you haven't already, but Again, you'll have slow days. You can follow all of the best practices and it'll still be slow because there's nothing that we can do or you can do as a driver to, of course, encourage customer orders in your marketplace. So having said that, let's see how slow it really was and look at the numbers. So this weekend shift here in Pittsburgh was from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. Total gross revenue from DoorDash, $28 and Uber Eats $11.50. So basically I would like to see 30 plus from each here on a more busy day, but this one, that's a grand total of $39.50. And that is a gross revenue per hour of $19.50. Really the floor that I'd like you to have this year driving food delivery. If you're hitting 18, 16, especially 14 and under, then we really need to look at, you know, what the marketplace is doing and making sure that you're following the best practices. Total deliveries here was four completed, receiving four tips as well, with an average tip of $4.58. Business miles at 15.2 with a payout of $2.60 per mile. And that gets a tax deduction of $8.51. So if you got value in this video, definitely drop me a like, and you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you, and I'll see you in the next one.